Hi, and welcome to the introduction to the Doman Method webinar. My name is Spencer Doman, and during this webinar, I'll be talking to you about the foundations of brain development and about how to help your child with special needs with the Doman Method. So let's get started. So I'd like to start by telling my story a bit, so you know a little bit about me. Uh, but with in telling my story, I really have to start by telling the story of my grandfather, Glenn Doman. When I grew up uh, as, a, as a young child, uh, I grew up in a very kind of special environment. Uh, I was surrounded by children with special needs. This is because my grandparents, Glenn and Katie Doman, and my parents, Douglas and Rosalind Doman, uh, worked and really made it their life mission to help children with special needs around the world. And so often uh, when my parents and grandparents were working, uh, they brought me with them. And so in the clinic uh, where they were seeing these children with special needs, I often spent um, my childhood uh, playing with the kids, uh, getting to know them. And so uh, this was a very kind of unique environment, but growing up as a child, I never realized that uh, my upbringing was in any way special or different from anyone else. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how uh, it got to that. And to tell that story, I really have to talk about my grandfather, Glenn Doman. My grandfather, Glenn, was trained as a physical therapist, uh, but he found that many of the conventional therapies that he was taught in school were not helping his patients. In fact, uh, he, began by working with people who had suffered strokes uh, and who had suffered brain damage. But when he found, or when he tried his conventional physical therapy with his patients, he didn't see any kind of significant results. They weren't getting better. And fortunately for the world, my grandfather was not a patient man. And when he found he wasn't getting results, he started looking for answers. He created new treatments and programs to help his patients. And interestingly, it, during his life, it's not just that he found new ways and treatments of helping people who had suffered brain damage and who had neurodevelopmental delays. He also found that he got the very best results when he taught parents of children with special needs how to do those programs. And I'll be talking a bit more about why his treatments that he discovered were so special and why he decided to teach the families of his patients how to do the program. The basis of everything that he discovered and everything I'm going to talk to you about today is that the treatments are designed to improve brain development and function. And so regardless of your child's issue, right, uh, as long as it is a neurodevelopmental condition, uh, they will need a program that will help their brain improve in development in order for them to progress in different areas of development. Whether your goals for your child are to improve their vision, to improve their hearing, to get them walking, to get them talking, to get them using their hands better, to improve their behavior, or to stop seizures. Whatever it is your goals are for your child, to achieve those goals, we're going to need to improve and speed up the development of their brain. And so that was really my grandfather's mission throughout his life, how to find new ways of treating the brain. And his programs were lovingly called the Doman Method. You know, he did not choose the name Doman Method. It was really the people who admired him, who named his programs and discoveries after him. And so we really carry on the tradition of calling it the Doman Method in honor of him. And he's probably best known around the world for having written best-selling books about child development, which have been read uh, and used by millions of parents. Uh, so some people uh, even come to this webinar because they first learned about my grandfather from his book, How to Teach Your Baby to Read or his book, What to Do About Your Brain Injured Child. These are books that have sold millions and millions of copies around the world, and uh, he's best known uh, for those books. 
Now, let me talk a little bit about uh, who I am. So, as I said, I, my journey to working with children with special needs really began uh, as a young child, growing up in this kind of unique world where I was surrounded by children that the world really viewed as hopeless. These were children who might have been diagnosed with autism or cerebral palsy. Some children had genetic abnormalities like Down syndrome. There were kids who uh, had epilepsy, uh, you know, children with developmental delays and learning problems. This was the world that I grew up in. And honestly, I didn't think anything of it. You know, I kind of looked at these children as my uh, brothers and sisters. And um, I didn't even realize uh, until I was a bit older that they really had problems that were limiting them in life. Because like most children, I saw the kids for who they were, not by their limitations. And so when I was in university, um, it really took me kind of going off to college to realize it, but I realized, you know, this is really my life's mission. And uh, I decided to join my grandparents and my parents in, in doing this. And I've never looked back ever since. So I'm the chief innovation officer for Domain International. Uh, so I'm very grateful to have a, a role like this where my job is to continue to look for in, innovative, me, uh, innovative methods to help kids with special needs and develop new programs that can help them in their cognitive development, their physical development, or their social development. I've worked for 13 years in the field of child development with kids with special needs. My greatest pleasure, if you followed me on any given day, most of my time is spent coaching parents around the world about the Doman Method and how to do the Doman Method with their kids to get maximum results. And my educational background is I have a master's degree in early childhood education. Let me tell you a little bit about Doman International and what it is that we try to achieve each and every day. So first of all, we're a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping kids with special needs to develop. And our ultimate goal for our children is wellness. And very often people hear this goal and they say, really, you know, kids with special needs who can't walk, talk, see well, hear, comprehend well, your goal is wellness. And we say, absolutely. In our opinion, we need to start with the highest goal imaginable, because if we set our goals, if we set our sights low, we're not going to achieve good results, right? First, you need to be asking the right kinds of questions in order to find the answers. And so our goal for each and every kid is wellness. And we are very happy to say that for some of our children, we achieve that goal and we are able to uh, graduate them from the domain method and send them on to school with their peers and they succeed with their peers in school, not in special classes, not in special education, but in school with everyone else. Uh, that's our goal. We carry on Glenn Doman's mission of empowering parents to help their children improve and, pro and progress. That's what we're really about as an organization. We're about empowering the families of kids with the knowledge and the tools that they need to help their children get better in every possible way. Now we're a team of professionals from various backgrounds and we create an integrative program. What you're gonna see from this presentation, uh, in, in order to get progress with a child with special needs, it's not just about one kind of therapy. It's about doing an integrative program that addresses their cognitive needs, their physical needs, their social needs, and their nutritional needs. We combine our findings and research from the past with innovative new treatments, with the goal of having the best results possible. We are not dogmatic. We don't stick to anything if it doesn't work. So for us, our goal is always to use what we found works and gets good results, but always to keep our sights open for what are new treatments that we can add. And each and every year, we are very proud to say that we add new treatments to help our kids get the best results possible. And our leadership team includes five members of the Doman family. I mentioned my parents. 
uh, Douglas and Rosalind, uh, who uh, lead Domain International. I have the pleasure of working with my wife, Melissa, and with my sister, Morgan. And so together as a family and as a team, uh, we uh, lead our organization. But as I said, we currently have staff uh, from nearly every continent in the world. We have 25 different staff uh, located in, in countries worldwide, and uh, we are very much an international organization and team. I'd like to talk about probably why you're here and why some treatments or why most treatments don't help kids with special needs improve, right? If all the answers for your child were in your local country and your healthcare system, you wouldn't be watching this webinar right now because you just bring your child to a professional and they'd fix all of your child's issues. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way for children with special needs. And there are some very important reasons why a lot of those treatments don't work. One major issue is that many professionals in this field have a limiting belief around kids with special needs. They often don't believe that the children can really get better. And if you don't believe that a child can get better, there's absolutely no way you're going to achieve significant results with that child. Because it means if, if you don't think it's possible, it means you're not trying to find the answers to achieve that goal. And so that's why I consider it so important to tell parents that our goal is wellness, because we have a mindset that we need to find the answers for every specific child. And I'm sure you feel that way as well. That's why you're searching for new answers. Now for children with developmental delays, it's very important that you understand that the symptoms that your child has are a result of a neurological problem. Something at some point along the way affected their brain development. It could have been something that occurred during pregnancy. It could have been something during a traumatic birth. It could have been something after birth, like an accident or an injury that hurt the brain. There are many possible ways that brain development can be affected uh, or that the brain can be damaged. Uh, but to help a child get better, we need to address that problem. Now, sometimes for certain children, it's not clear when brain damage occurred. Sometimes parents will say to us, you know, my child uh, had a normal pregnancy, a normal birth. We, we don't know what happened. And so sometimes that is the case. But along the way, at some point, the child's brain development was affected. Some kind of injury happened in the brain. Uh, and that led to the child having issues, whether those issues are in, in seeing or reading or talking or walking or epilepsy, whatever that issue is, it's because something occurred in the brain. And here's the big problem. The world has always tried to help kids with special needs by treating the symptoms instead of the root cause of the problem. They try to treat the symptoms instead of the root cause. Let me give you an example of this. If you have a child with special needs, very often professionals will view the child by their symptoms. They'll say, this child has a speech problem, so they need speech therapy. Or this child has a, a walking, uh, isn't able to walk, so they need a physical therapist. And they aren't able to use their hands well, so they need an occupational therapist. And so the treatment is all based around the symptoms. The problem is, is that the child's problems aren't in the mouth uh, or in the hands and in the feet. Uh, the, the problem is in the brain. And you can't get the symptoms to go away if you try to treat the symptoms. The only way to get the symptoms to go away is to treat the root cause of the problem. Let me give you an example of this that I think we can all identify with. Imagine, if uh, you went to the doctor and you said, doctor, something's wrong. I've got terrible chest pains, terrible chest pains. There's, they hurt so much. And I can't feel my left arm. It's completely numb. I haven't felt it for an hour. And I feel nauseous and unwell. You know, 
a good doctor would realize by the symptoms what the problem was and would treat the root cause of the problem. They would say, based on your symptoms, you are having a heart attack and I need to treat your heart as soon as possible to save your life. A bad doctor would say, well, you've got chest pains, so I'm going to give you a muscle relaxant for your chest. And, you know, your left arm, you can't feel it, so let me do some massage on your left arm so, you know, you can feel it a bit better. And let me give you some anti-nausea medication for your nausea, right? So a good doctor treats the root cause. A bad doctor would treat the symptoms, and unfortunately in that case, it would lead with the patient dying from the heart attack. Well, with kids with special needs, this happens all the time. Professionals are so focused on their symptoms, they never bother to ask, what's the root cause? And how do we treat the brain? My grandfather, interestingly, learned this the hard way. Uh, he was visiting the home of a patient who had had a stroke. This was an elderly man. And uh, the family was actually quite poor, and they were all kind of standing around my grandfather as he did the physical therapy on the patient. And so what he did was he was taking this man's arm and he was moving the man's arm back and forth because the man was very rigid and spastic in his movements because of his brain damage. So here my grandfather was moving the arm like this. And one of the granddaughters of the patient said to my grandfather, she said, you know, the doctor said he had a stroke in his brain about here. And my grandfather said, yes, that's correct. And the granddaughter said, so tell me, if the stroke was here, why are you working on this? And my grandfather didn't have an answer for it. And he answered something that he regretted for the rest of his life. He said to this granddaughter, oh, you'd have to go to school for years to understand that. Now, he said that to the granddaughter, and she accepted the answer, but he knew in his heart he didn't know why he was doing what he did. And so that really began him on a lifelong mission to actually find out where the injury was occurring in the brain, and then what are possible answers to help treat the root cause of the problem. And the best thing is, if you treat the problem itself, the symptoms start to go away. The brain is the body's command center, right? So if we can help the brain improve, then all of a sudden the child can learn how to walk, they can learn how to talk, they can learn how to use their hands because you're treating the root cause rather than the symptoms. If the problem is in the brain, the brain needs to be treated. If we treat the symptoms, we will never fix the source of the problem. Now, along with these great amounts of confusion around kids with special needs, we have another kind of confusion. There are so many different diagnoses used for children with neurodevelopmental conditions. And by the way, when I say neurodevelopmental condition, I mean any child that has a developmental delay because of something in their brain. The issue is there are so many different kinds of neurodevelopmental diagnoses. Autism, for example. Cerebral palsy is very common. ADHD. Learning problems. Epilepsy and seizures. Developmental delay. Mental retardation. Traumatic brain injury. Cortical blindness and visual impairment. Trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome, and other chromosomal abnormalities. These are all different diagnoses and labels used for children with brain injuries and with neurodevelopmental conditions. And so it's important to understand that while these children may have very different symptoms, all of them in the end have something that has gone wrong in their brain development. And so we have to treat the brain. Now, by the way, even if your child has a diagnosis which is not appearing on this screen, uh, please don't worry. Uh, we have seen over 300 different diagnoses of children that we have treated. You can even see there that we've seen many children with different genetic disorders or chromosomal abnormalities. 
uh, it, it seems remarkable to many. But while children might have genetic disorders, very often, as a consequence of the genetic disorder, they also have a neurodevelopmental condition. And here's the thing, we can treat their neurodevelopmental uh, condition. So for example, we have children with Down syndrome who have graduated from our program and gone on to get master's degrees. Children with Down syndrome are widely regarded as being mentally retarded throughout the whole world. We don't use that term. That's a term that's used by many professionals. And yet we know that they have a great deal of potential. All of these children have a great deal of potential if you know what to do to help unlock brain development. So there are hundreds of different diagnoses. And if you do not know if we could help your child, simply reach out to us. I'm going to be giving some contact information at the end uh, of this lecture on how to reach out to us. And so just let us know what your child's diagnosis is and we will let you know if we could possibly help your kid. Now, Here's the thing. Here's how we can help the brain improve. We can help the brain develop faster because of something called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is now a well-known term. Uh, it's kind of a buzzword now, right? And you hear it on commercials and in lectures all the time. Neuroplasticity is very simply the human brain's ability to change. Our brains actually throughout our entire lives have the ability to change. Now, there are different ways that we can help our brain change. One way is by environmental stimulus. So, so essentially, the kinds of stimulation that we do can lead to our brain developing better and changing. So for example, if you take two people and one person does stimulating things every day, they read books, they do puzzles, uh, they take up new hobbies, maybe they learn how to paint, or they learn how to play the piano. That kind of stimulation will lead to changes in their brain. While if someone else doesn't do anything, they just lie on the couch all day, and they don't get stimulation, they will not have those kind of neuroplastic effects on the brain. The next thing is the activities that we engage in can impact brain plasticity. So for example, if we go running each day, you and I, that can lead to brain plasticity. Uh, but if we are sedentary, uh, it could impact brain development. If you and I eat healthy, that can be good for brain development and function. But if we eat unhealthy foods, it can uh, be bad for brain development. And so essentially, the ways we are stimulated and the activities we engage in can change the way our brain develops and functions. And this is what is so crucial about your child's program. In the end, our program, the Domain Method, is about what kind of stimulation to give your child to maximize brain development and what kinds of opportunities and activities you need to give your child uh, in order to help unlock uh, that brain development. Once it's understood that a child's problem problems are a result of a neurological condition and that the brain can grow and develop, it is wrong for anyone to state that a child does not have the possibility of improving. So if you've ever spoken to a professional who has told you that your child cannot improve or won't get better or won't learn a new skill, well, you should greatly doubt whether that professional really knew what they were talking about. Because anyone who knows that a child's condition is in the brain and that the brain can improve, well, it, they would know that the child has um, a capability of getting better. It is our responsibility to create treatment programs which lead to improvements in brain function. And so this brings us to one of my grandfather's most famous quotes, the brain grows by use. The brain grows by use. The brain grows by use, right? The ways that we stimulate our brain and the activities that we engage in help grow and develop the human brain. Now, let's talk for a second about why we teach you how to do the program. So you might be thinking, well, I'm sold. You know, uh, let me come to a Domain International Center around the world and you do the treatment with my child. 
Well, it's not that simple. Uh, because what we have found is that a child needs consistent and routine treatment in order to get the best results possible. And what we have found is we get the finest results when we teach our parents how to do the treatment program with their children. Why is this? How can parents be the best possible therapists for their children? Well, first of all, no one loves a child more than their parents. So you love your child, and that means you are more dedicated to your child's improvement than anyone else, right? For example, I want your child to get better and improve, but your dedication for your child would be much greater than mine because you love your child more than anyone else in the world. No one is willing to give more time for a child's well-being than their parents. And this is why I say to parents, uh, there's no possibility that a brilliant, even a brilliant professional who knows exactly what they're doing can achieve amazing results with your child uh, one hour twice a week, which is the typical uh, attitude for uh, treatment for children with special needs. You know, maybe twice a week, 30 minutes, twice a week, one hour. Uh, that's considered intensive. No, no, a child needs consistent treatment to help get better. And so your ability to give your child some time each and every day to help develop their brains is essential for your child's progress. Also, kids feel most comfortable with their parents and that allows them to engage in programs and uh, cooperate with their parents that they may not do with uh, another adult. And Glenn Doman found that when we as professionals empower parents, that parents can apply the treatment at home and with love. And the kids did better than he ever dreamed. The kids did better at home with their parents than they did when they were at his center. And so this was really a paradigm shift, the idea that we were going to empower families with knowledge. Let's now get into specifics about things that you should know about your kid. Well, let's begin by talking about the developmental profile. The developmental profile is our tool at Domen International to uh, evaluate children and to um, not just evaluate where they are when they begin treatment, but also to see what milestones they can achieve uh, on our program and track their progress. Now, this is a uh, tool that can take years for a professional to, to learn how to use to evaluate a child's uh, treatment. So I'm going to just very quickly here explain to you how we would use this. Here on the left hand side, you can see in the second column, it says time frame at the very top. So there you can see the average ages that a child achieves different milestones. The very highest uh, being 72 months, which is six years of age, because the majority of substantial brain development for neurotypical children uh, happens within the first six years of life. Uh, now, uh, Next to time frame, you can see that there are different columns uh, of development. So for example, you can see visual competence, which is the ability to see. Then next to it, you have auditory competence, the ability to hear. And next, tactile competence, the ability to feel. We would use this tool to measure a child's development in vision, hearing, and tactility. These are the three most important sensory areas the ability to see, hear, and feel. And so we know that for a child to progress in all areas of their brain development, they have to do well in these three areas because the ability to see, hear, and feel is the way we take in information about the world. It's the way your child takes in information about the world. And so evaluating these different abilities are, is very, very important. Then on the right side of the profile, we have the most important motor areas. Mobility, which is the ability to uh, crawl, creep, walk, run, hop, and so on. Language, which is speech, and then manual competence, the ability to use our hands. Uh, 
So for each and every child on the program, we track them in these six most important areas uh, of their development. The development of their vision, hearing, tactility, and their mobility, speech, and manual competence. These are the most important and fundamental areas of brain development. And you can see, just to give you one example, in mobility, the first level, which is the one month old level, which you can see in red, is the ability to move arms and legs. Then we have the ability to crawl on the belly. Next in yellow at seven months, the ability to creep on the hands and knees. So using this, we know what normal child development looks like. And so because we know what normal child development looks like, when we evaluate a child with special needs, we are then able to see, we get really a full picture of their development in these different areas. And by the way, we can also show this to parents and parents can see how the child is developing compared to other children of the same age. And then we know where a child's strengths lie in their development and then what areas need focus and attention to help a child develop better in those areas. Here you can see the full developmental profile. And in the online domain method course, which is our online course for parents of children with special needs, we teach parents how to utilize this profile to track their child's development over time. But we feel that it's not just enough for us to know how to track your child's development, you should also know how to do it. By the way, I won't have time to go into all the details on every topic in this webinar, but if you go to YouTube, you can look up this video called Developmental Milestones, Understanding Your Child. It's a 30 minute free webinar where I teach parents about what are some of the major milestones that you should be looking for in your child's development between birth and six years of age. Now, let's talk about some other important pieces of knowledge for parents. It's very important that you understand that there's no relationship between brain injury and intelligence, but there is a huge relationship between brain injury and the ability to express intelligence. What does this mean? Well, a lot of the world believes that kids with special needs are unintelligent, that because they can't talk or they can't walk or they can't use their hands well, that they lack in understanding. And this is very, very bad. Uh, it's a very bad assumption to make about kids with special needs. Because very often, it's not just that the professionals believe this, they tell parents that the child is unintelligent. And so the parent uh, is told by the professional that the child cannot understand like other kids. And so, you know, there's no way that the child could comprehend what parents are trying to say or explain to the child. And so the problem with that is that the professional, even though they might be well-meaning, is greatly limiting the child's development. Because if you're telling the adults in the child's life that the child lacks intelligence, those adults are going to interact with the child in a very different way. They're not going to stimulate the child in the same way that they would stimulate another child. They wouldn't talk to them in the same way. They wouldn't give them the same opportunities. They wouldn't have the same expectations. And the problem with all of that is the professionals are basically putting a ceiling on the child's development. And so the parents, not knowing that actually that their child might be highly intelligent, begin to put limits on their own child. And this is very, very destructive. I always give parents the example of uh, the great astrophysicist, Stephen Hawking. Uh, you probably know Stephen Hawking. He's the most famous astrophysicist, I think, who has ever lived. And uh, Hawking was a healthy uh, man uh, until he uh, developed motor neuron disease when he lost all of his motor abilities, the ability to speak, walk, use his hands, and so on. Now, the amazing thing about Hawking is even though he could no longer move or speak, he retained all of his intelligence. And fortunately for him, he was able to communicate by a small little device with like a little keypad that was basically he was able to use to communicate. And so fortunately, the world knew that Hawking was brilliant because he was able to communicate before he 
uh, developed motor neuron disease. The problem with this is that many children with neurodevelopmental delays are born unable to speak and unable to use their hands and legs. And so it's assumed they're unintelligent. And imagine if Stephen Hawking had been born the way he was at the end of his life. Would people have treated him like he was brilliant? Would he have been given the stimulation and opportunities he would have been given otherwise? Or would professionals have told his parents that he was unintelligent? I think we all know the answer to that. And this is both an empowering and a frightening prospect. Empowering because you as parents now know that your child actually has great capabilities of being smart. That the ability to understand is uh, through the auditory pathway. It's a hearing ability to hear language and understand. Reading is a visual ability, right? Walking, talking, those are different neurological functions. The ability uh, to walk is mobility. The ability to talk is language. These are different neurological functions. Just because someone can't walk doesn't mean that they can't read or understand. And just because they can't talk doesn't mean they can't understand. So don't limit your child uh, based on the fact that they might be poor in their mobility or speech. Here, and by the way, I'm going to try to show you photos and videos of kids during this presentation. Here's Federica, who is on our program. Uh, Federica was diagnosed with cerebral palsy uh, before she began our program. But here you can see her parents are not limiting her uh, based on her difficulties with movement and with speech. They are stimulating uh, her, they are reading to her. And so Federica is an excellent reader. She reads above age level uh, because they were able to use the Domain Method reading program with her uh, when they began the program. The next thing is for the brain to be treated successfully, an integrated approach is needed. For a child to have optimal development, they need treatment that addresses the three most important areas of development. First, the child's physiological development, which is their nutrition and uh, their uh, respiration. So for every child on our program, we give recommendations about the ideal nutrition program for the child. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but the largest number of neurons, which are brain cells, outside of our brain is actually in our digestive tract and in the human gut. So Nutrition plays an essential role in brain development. Next, physical development. We need to get a child walking, running, using their hands well. And lastly, intellectual development, uh, cognitive development, sensory development. All of those things are very important to get a child understanding and learning at age level. These three areas impact one another. For example, if a child has weak physiological development, if they are unhealthy, well, it's gonna be very difficult to get good physical and cognitive development with that child. Meanwhile, if the child doesn't do physical activity, keeping them healthy and having good intellectual development is going to be challenging. There's a reason why schools that have physical activity every day have better test scores. Physical activity helps cognitive development. So these three areas really go hand in hand. And so our program for that reason is integrative. Let me talk to you a little bit about different programs that are part of the Domain Method. Here, for example, you see Nicole, and Nicole is doing uh, a program called Brachiation. Uh, it's lovingly known as the monkey bars all around the world. So Nicole is doing brachiation, and you can see her feet are off the ground. And by the way, Nicole was actually diagnosed with a genetic abnormality, and she is doing the Doman method to help her brain development. And by the way, Nicole's genetic abnormality, for 80% of children with this disorder, uh, parents are told that the child will either not learn to walk or will walk very poorly. And uh, Nicole runs kilometers every day as part of her physical development program. Here you can see she is brachiating. Here's Sophia. Sophia has trisomy 21. She is also brachiating in this photo. Now, Sophia is four years old in this picture, uh, and she later went on to graduate from our program and join her peers in school 
with other well neurotypical children. Let's talk about this program of brachiation about, and why it can be so helpful for brain development. First of all, look at the forward hand that is grasping the rung of the ladder. Note that Sophia is grasping the rung using her pincer grasp, which is also known as cortical opposition. This ability to have a pincer grasp is very important for fine motor skills, right, in using your hands together, and also in activities like writing. So for Sophia, this is helping her in the process of learning how to write and to use her hands. She is gaining strength in her hands and arms, which will be very good for her overall manual development. Now, look at her eyes. She's looking with both eyes at the next rung that she's going to grasp. That's very important for visual development. This ability to use two eyes together is the ability of convergence of vision. Convergence of vision is the ability to fuse your two eyes together. And it is a common problem for kids with special needs. Very often kids with special needs will have an eye in or an eye out. Parents will notice that they have a strabismus of some, of some sort and that the child is not seeing clearly. Very often these kids might have difficulty with reading or writing, catching a ball, walking up and down steps tends to be very difficult for children with convergence issues because if you can't use your two eyes together well, you cannot see depth. You cannot perceive depth well. And so this program, Sophia is using her two eyes together to grasp that next rung. That's very good for her visual development. And meanwhile, also, this activity induces deep breathing. And we're going to talk more about this later in the presentation. But deep breathing is very important for increasing oxygen delivery to the brain. Uh, and oxygen is the food of the brain. And we know that if we can increase oxygen delivery to the brain, it helps brain development and function. And so doing an activity like this, which Sophia is doing, helps her brain develop. The next piece of knowledge that you should know is that everything that your child uh, learns is through the five sensory pathways, right? Your child can see, hear, feel, taste, and smell. These are the highways carrying information into the brain. Now, if you want to stimulate the brain to grow and develop, you must utilize these five pathways. The only ways your child can learn anything about the world the only five ways your child can be stimulated are through the five sensory pathways. So it's all about knowing what kinds of stimulation should be done, what kinds of visual stimulation, auditory stimulation, tactile, smell and taste stimulation to get the information that the brain needs so that the brain can function in the best possible way. And so this sensory approach is very, very important to impacting the brain. You know, very often when you look at typical therapists, they're working on speech and motor ability, trying to have the child speak or move their hands and legs. These are motor abilities. To do something with our motor abilities, information travels from the brain to our mouth or from the brain to our hands in order to conduct that activity. So it's information flowing out of the brain. Sensory abilities, seeing, hearing, are carrying information into the brain. And to get the brain to develop, we need to get information into the brain in order to get activity out of it. So using the sensory abilities allows us to stimulate and help brain development. Next, for a treatment to be successful, it must be performed correctly to yield results. The three keys to success are frequency, intensity, and duration. Frequency, intensity, and duration. Frequency is how many times you do a treatment, right? How many times in a day do you do an activity? Intensity is how strong you do that activity. Duration, how long you do that activity. Frequency, intensity, and duration. You know, just to give you an example about how important frequency, intensity, and duration is, we all know that, you know, Exercise, for example, is healthy. So if we all know exercise is healthy, why do we go to a physical trainer to teach us 
how to get into shape. It's because they know the frequency, intensity, and duration of each activity to get the best possible results. For us, it's not just about teaching parents what to do. It's about teaching them the frequency, the intensity, and the duration to do that activity. Many of the things that we do in the domain method and have been doing for decades are now understood all around the world as being beneficial. For example, we take our Im immobile children, the children who cannot move, and give them lots of time on their bellies so that they can learn how to crawl and begin the process of moving. Now, many people around the world know that tummy time is very important now, but you ask them, how often should a parent put a child on the floor? Um, how frequent? For how long? They can't give you an answer. Uh, many people know that light now is important for children with visual impairment, that using light stimulation can be helpful, but they don't know the frequency, intensity, and duration. That is what we've been working on for decades, finding out how many times, how strong, and for how long we should do these different treatments to get a real impact on the brain. Next, your child's diet can greatly impact brain function. As I said, the brain and the gut are constantly sending information uh, to one another, uh, relaying information. And so what a child eats can greatly impact their overall development. Not just diet, sleep, keeping a healthy environment is essential for the child to progress physically and intellectually. So in the online domain method course, we teach parents about foods that are common intolerances for kids. What are healthy foods that you should be feeding your children? What are foods to avoid? Next, physical activity is essential for your child to progress in all areas, not just in their mobility. It can also be important for visual development uh, because very, you know, very often when a child is moving better, they're moving through space and that helps develop their vision. It can help develop breathing, which is a very common issue for children with special needs. It can improve sleep, digestion, cognitive development, concentration and focus, right? It is well known in schools where children do physical activity that the children learn better. And physical activity can also help speech development. So physical programs, even for children who can walk and run, it's very important that parents are taught the right physical programs so that their child can have this progress in other areas. I would also say here that physical activity can have a very important impact on behavior, how a child interacts uh, and how they feel. Let's look at little Yana here. Yana is learning how to crawl for the first time here. She began the program completely immobile, but you can see she's on her belly, on the floor, on a smooth surface, learning how to crawl for the first time. Now, I love this example because first of all, please notice that Yana is picking up her head. For many children with mobility problems, maybe diagnosed with cerebral palsy or developmental delay, uh, hypotonia or hypertonia, very often parents are concerned about neck uh, stability and strength. But here you can see Yana, when she's put down on her belly, she has a reason to pick up her head. A child who's always sitting in a wheelchair or in a stroller or in a chair has no reason to learn how to pick up their head. It's constantly being propped up. But here, Yana's picking up her head. Now you can see here with Yana, she has a convergent strabismus with one eye coming in. But now with her looking up and around her environment, and in the process of her beginning to move, she's using her vision more. And so mobility will help drive her visual development. Now, intellectual stimulation is also very important. Uh, and so probably of anything, the Doman Method is best known for its cognitive development programs. It's programs to teach reading, uh, math, uh, giving a child a world of knowledge when they're young. And so actually my grandfather, Glenn, is best known for his work in this area. And intellectual development is not just important for improving understanding and comprehension, but also speech, a child's maturity and behavior, and of course, success later in academic life. As I said before, 
Oxygen is food of the brain. And so for that reason, we have developed domain method oxygenation programs, which are activities that help deliver more oxygen to the brain to help the brain function better and develop. Like I said, oxygen is the most important food of the brain. So if we can deliver higher amounts of oxygen to the brain, we can uh, improve how the brain functions and develops. And in the online domain method course, we teach you how to begin the domain method oxygenation program to help a child uh, breathe better. better. And uh, when, we, when we find that we can increase oxygen delivery to the brain, it can help in all areas. It can help in a child's speech develop, development, their mobility development, their manual development, and so on. Here you can see a child on our program, John Marco, and he is doing aerobic running. This is a kind of running which is done to maximize oxygen delivery to his brain. So we, from all the way from Yana, who was immobile and not crawling, all the way to John Marco, who's running kilometers every day, we develop physical programs for children to help them reach their goals in life. What are some things that you can get started with now? to help your child develop better? Well, the first thing that you can do is to give your child healthy foods and remove all junk foods and unhealthy foods from your child's diet. And if we were going to begin, we would start with common food intolerances. These are foods that children are most likely to have some kind of intolerance or food allergy to. And the most problematic ones are dairy, gluten, soy, and sugar. Those are the three most common intolerances that we see. And so looking at removing dairy, removing wheat, removing soy, removing sugar from your child's diet is a very worthwhile thing to try. Now, you know, I have to say, I'm not a physician. I've never met your child. And so I cannot tell you exactly what you should do with your child specifically, right? That's why at Domain International, we uh, give every family who comes to our online course a staff coach so that they can best uh, know their child and design the best possible program for their kid. But what I can say from a general standpoint is that um, dairy, gluten, sugar, these are very often problematic foods for kids. And so parents need to be very careful uh, about giving these foods. And for many of our children, they do best when these foods are eliminated and taken out of their diet, at least for some period of time. Uh, sometimes parents see uh, improved health when they do this or better focus and concentration, better behavior, uh, less skin problems. Uh, sometimes the child has progress in other areas like speech development or mobility. It completely depends on the kid. But by looking at these foods first, often parents have the best success. The next thing that you should do is give your child as much opportunity to move as possible each and every day. So for example, if your child's able to run, bring him out every day to run. If your child's able to walk, bring him out for a walk every day. If he can creep, let them creep. If your child can crawl, have your child crawl. Reinforcing ability will help your child advance in mobility, right? So if your child is able to walk but not run, having them walk a lot, right, will help your child begin the process of running, right? If your child is able to crawl, have them crawl a lot and they'll begin the process of creeping. Um, this is the, the best way to get your child to move up in their mobility is reinforce the highest ability that they already have, and to do it each and every day. Here you can see Sophia, and Sophia is creeping, right? So she's creeping on her hands and knees. You can see parents have very intelligently put some stuffed animals up to, uh, you know, kind of keep her engaged and interested uh, in the program. She has like a little bit of company, an audience that's watching her as she creeps. Next, Teach your child how to read. Uh, and probably of any domain method program, the reading program is the most famous and has been used the most with children all around the world. And you know there are many things that I could say about the reading program. Honestly, I could have a whole course just based on this. And in the online domain method course, 
I actually spend two hours teaching parents how and why they should teach their child to read uh, with the Doman method. Now, the most important thing that differentiates the Doman method from the other ways of teaching children to read is that kids with special needs need large print size. When you make print size large, it makes it easy for a child with immature vision to see and learn how to read words with ease. Now, I, I can't go into much detail in this course about our reading program, uh, but here you can see uh, the words are bold and in red, uh, and we teach a child these words in a repeated way enough times so that a child can learn how to read the words. I'd like to show you all a video of a child, and this child has only been doing the reading program for one week after his mom took our online Doman Method course. Now, he is pre-verbal, so he doesn't speak uh, any words yet. He makes sounds, but he's not speaking yet. But you're going to see after one week how much this child who is unable to speak uh, can, can learn how to read. His name is Noah, and you're going to see his mom playing a little game with him uh, using his toys with some of the words he's learned how to read in the Doman Method reading program. What is it? Pig. Where's pig? Where's pig? Good. What is it? A cow. Good. What is it? A sheep. A black sheep. How about this one? Noah? What is it? A horse. Very good. How about this one? Where is it? I'm tired. Noah? Good. So you, there you could see Noah reading his first words. And you can see for so many kids like Noah, parents could never be taught uh, by so many professionals uh, how to teach a child to read. Most professionals wouldn't even think that's important for a child. But here you can see a child really excelling in his ability to read and making real connections, right? It's not just that he's recognizing those words. He understands what they mean and he's connecting it with something that he knows. Now, we would recommend, along with the Doman Method reading program and teaching your child how to read, we would also recommend to read your child just regular books at home for 15 to 30 minutes a day. Daily reading helps comprehension, it helps speech development, creativity, imagination, and is a bonding experience for parents and child. So many studies have been done showing that reading to a child daily is very good for their cognitive development, their speech development, their speaking vocabulary, their imagination, and uh, most kids just love to do it. So it's an easy thing for you to implement every single day. And of course, we would recommend establishing successful communication with your child. Now, I don't have much time to talk about speech development today, but you can go to YouTube and watch my free webinar on enhancing speech development in children with special needs. Just go to YouTube, search for that name, and watch it. I talk about activities that can help promote speech development. Uh, and uh, I also talk about uh, other ways of communicating with children uh, if they are not yet verbal. So I highly recommend that in addition. Your child may need intensive visual, auditory, and tactile stimulation. Many of our children need a lot of sensory stimulation to help the brain function. Many children with brain injury have sensory problems, and that limits their ability to learn from their environment. Right? Like I said, you only have five ways of learning about the brain, your five sensory pathways. If those are impacted by brain injury or by a neurodevelopmental condition, your ability to learn is impacted. And so for many children, we need to do visual, auditory, and tactile stimulation to get them to learn easier and better. Your child is smarter than you think. Believe in your child's intelligence. 
Your child will progress faster if you do, right? So don't listen to the naysayers and the people that tell you that your child is unintelligent. Uh, they're, they're not helping your child by telling you that. The best thing that you can do for your child is stimulate them throughout the day, explain things to them, teach them about the world, talk to them. Uh, that is the best way to improve your child's understanding and comprehension. Believe in your kid. Here you can see another one of our programs. Here you can see um, a mom teaching her son Palayo Domen cards. Palayo is another graduate of our program. He suffered brain injury uh, as a baby. And uh, we are very proud to say that uh, by four years of age, he graduated from our program. That meant he's ready to school, go to school with his well peers. The last time I saw him, I told parents, uh, if he were in a lineup with 20 other children, uh, no one would be able to ever point out that he ever had the neurological issue. Uh, he, in some ways, he's above age level and an exceptional example of the potential of kids with special needs. Here you can see his mom is teaching him about different sports uh, with domain cards. If your child has mobility problems and difficulty moving, take the enemy of gravity and make it into a friend. So this is a wonderful, wonderful point and offers so much hope for those of you who have children with mobility issues. If your child is unable to move or doesn't move well, one of the problems is they cannot move their arms and legs well because of their brain development being impacted and their brain not functioning normally. And gravity pulls their bodies toward the center of the earth, right? So gravity is always pulling us down. And so for children with mobility issues, gravity is an enemy. But what we've learned with the Doman method over decades is to turn the enemy of gravity into a friend. And I'd like to show you the first program that we use that turns gravity into a friend. This is called the inclined floor. Here you see little Theodora and she's on an inclined floor and the inclined floor is inclined to make it as easy as possible for a kid to crawl down. Many children, when you put them on their bellies on the floor, they're unable to coordinate their movements to move forward. And so they stay in the same place. But with the inclined floor, that if the child moves their arms and legs, they will advance down that inclined floor. And so uh, that's the, the best thing about this program. The child moves their arms and legs a little bit, they move forward and they learn, right? Their brain learns, I move my arms and legs and I crawl forward. And so as the child does this more and more, they learn I can actually move forward on my own. And they start to become invested in moving around. Now look at, at this little girl here on the inclined floor. Her head is up. She's looking around. She's exploring the world around her. That's very good for her cognitive development, for her neck control, but she's also learning to crawl forward. Let's watch a little girl learn how to crawl forward on the inclined floor. Now you're actually going to see two different videos edited into one and they're about six months apart. The first is her learning how to move for the first time in her life on the inclined floor. And the second is her crawling independently on the flat floor. When you're watching the video, don't just notice how uh, her mobility improves. Watch her movement of arms and legs and how she actually is gaining function in her limbs. Here you can see she's crawling down the inclined floor, mainly using her left leg and some movement from her right leg. She's crawling for a toy. Mom is urging her on. And here she is crawling independently. Watch her arms now. Look how much function is now in her arms. Before she was not using them at all. Look at how far she's bringing that leg up to push herself forward. Her movement isn't perfect, but she's independent now for the first time in her life. She can get all around her house. She can navigate her full environment. That is a huge, huge ability for her to gain. It's the first of many major milestones that she will gain in her physical development. 
As I said to you, we take the enemy of gravity and make it into a friend. Here you can see a little girl learning how to creep on her hands and knees for, for the first time in the anti-gravity environment. This is an advanced physical program that we use to teach children how to creep. Here you, you're going to see little Nicolas uh, walking under Glenn's ladder, which is named in honor of my grandfather, Glenn, which has been used to teach thousands of children around the world how to walk for the first time. Let's watch Nicolas learn how to walk under the uh, under Glenn's ladder. So just to show you and talk a little bit about how Glenn's Ladder is so powerful. First of all, we're taking the enemy of gravity and making it into a friend. You can see that Nicolas is holding himself up, but that gravity is actually straightening out his body. Uh, so that is very important. And he's learning how to bear the weight of his body on his legs over time. Last but not least, he's using cross pattern movements where when his left leg moves forward, his right arm moves forward. And when his right leg moves forward, his left arm moves forward. Everything that we do when we crawl, creep, walk, or run, we always do it in a cross pattern. It's one of the most important aspects of brain development, the two hemispheres of the brain working in unison. And so here you can see Nicolas is learning how to bear his weight, and how to walk for the first time. It's a really inspiring sight. I'm not sure if you saw this, but when he got to the end of the ladder, his mom was sitting there waiting for him. So he was creeping, uh, well, I'm sorry, walking toward his mom. Okay, well, I would like to talk now about how you can stay in contact and learn more from Doman International. So first of all, by the way, if you'll, um, Totally comfortable at this point in the presentation taking photographs of these different slides if you want to remember all the information. So first of all, stay in contact with us. Uh, that is our website, domaininternational.org. Please visit it. We've got a blog there where we are constantly releasing information. You can sign up for our e-newsletter, which we send out every two weeks uh, with information and in, uh, for parents, guidance, and uh, vi victories and wins that our kids are achieving. That is our Facebook page, facebook.com uh, backslash Domain International, or just go to Facebook and search for Domain International. And our Instagram handle is at Domain International. Please follow us. Uh, it's, it's a great way to be constantly inspired and to learn more about how to help your child. We are giving away a ton of free knowledge and tools. Now, if you're interested in pursuing the Doman method for your child, there are really three steps for you at this point. The first is to contact Doman International to discuss your child and the possible next steps of the program. And I'm going to show you on the next slide how to go to domaninternational.org and fill out the contact form so that you can tell us a bit more about your child and one of our representatives can contact you. So our representatives will call you, speak about uh, what the possibilities are for our program and your child to let you know if your child is a candidate for our program. And they will also answer any questions that you have about our online course called The Domain Method from Special Needs to Wellness. And I'll tell you more about this online course in just a second. Third, from the course, you can begin a Domain Method program at home 
from the information that you've learned. So as you can see, this is our contact page on our website. If you just go to domaninternational.org, you can see there in the top level menu in green, there's a button that says contact. If you click on that contact button, it brings you to the contact page, fill in uh, your name, your email, your phone number, uh, tell us about your child, and one of our worldwide representatives, the one from your region, will get into contact with you and answer all questions that you have. I'd like to show you a short video about the online domain method course, uh, which is our uh, premium online course for families who want to learn how to use the domain method at home and apply it with their child. So let's watch the video. The Doman Method Online Course is the first comprehensive online course ever created for families of children with special needs. The course is designed to teach parents integrative treatments that will help their children develop in the best possible way. It is taught by the world's leading experts in the Doman Method. Created by Glenn Doman over 60 years ago, the Doman Method has helped tens of thousands of children with special needs. Okay, so you're looking for, first of all, does the child hear the sound? Second of all, can the child locate the sound? This full week online course is designed to empower parents to help their children. During the course, parents access 25 hours of lectures about the Doma method and child development, as well as hours of live question and answer video conferences with Doma International's coaches. Now, every parent worldwide can access knowledge at their fingertips, which before was impossible. The Doma method course online, empowering parents to transform children. So let me tell you a little bit more about the online domain method course. It's a four week online course where we teach you about the foundations of the domain method and the best integrative program to start with your child, the best mobility development program, the best cognitive development program, the best sensory development program, uh, the nutrition program, and our domain method oxygenation program. The first week of the course includes lectures about the foundations of the Doman Method, neuroplasticity, and child development. Our team teaches you how to evaluate your child using the developmental profile so that understanding your child's development is essential for the future success of your kid and for making the very most out of the course. Because once we know where your child is on the profile, we can design the very best program for your child. In the second week, we teach the fundamentals of motor and cognitive development for kids with special needs. We teach children, um, we teach about children who have mobility problems uh, and also for children who can walk, how to get them moving even better. So for any kind of child with any kind of mobility issue, we teach mobility development programs. We also teach uh, about cognitive development, how to improve communication with your child, and how to teach your child to read. In the third week of the course, we teach about the sensory integration program, the right kinds of visual, auditory, and tactile integration for kids with sensory issues. We also teach about nutrition and how to implement an ideal diet for your child. We teach about the Doman Method Oxygenation Program to improve oxygenation of the brain. In the last week, maybe the most important week, each participant receives a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, consultation call with uh, one of our staff coaches at Doman International. We design your child's program for the upcoming months uh, and answer any questions that you have. So you always leave the course with a full treatment plan for your child completely designed. The course includes 25 hours of instruction from our team about various areas of development. And by the way, the teachers are the world's leading experts in their area. We have Douglas and Rosalind Doman who have 40 years of experience teaching in mobility development. Uh, Melissa Doman uh, teaches about physical development. 
I teach about cognitive development. Dr. Aravind Bagade teaches about nutrition. So you have the world's leading experts talking in these subjects on the Doman Method. You also get a staff coach who is assigned to you throughout the course. Uh, and that staff coach answers any question that you have. They coach you along the way and they make sure that you know what the very best programs are for your child. We have group question and answer sessions that you can tune into with all the other parents taking the course to get your questions answered by our staff. So kind of like this, you would join and ask me or the other members of the team your questions about your child. You have a private uh, video conference meeting with a Domain Method coach at the end of the course to finalize your child's plan. And you get access to Domain International evaluations and our future advanced courses. So we do have courses that come after the initial online course to teach about more advanced programs for kids with special needs. So taking the online Domain Method course gets you access to those advanced courses. And also, if you ever want to come to Domain International in the future for an evaluation to have your child assessed by our team and for our team to design a program for your child, uh, you would also have to take the course. Now, I'd like to tell you about some bonuses that we are now offering uh, during this period for people that sign up early for the next online course. So we run courses throughout the year, typically about every three to six months, depending where we are in our yearly calendar. And we give bonuses for parents if they sign up early for the online course. And when I say sign up early, I mean pay in full for the course. $9 in additional value over the course itself. That includes an immediate 30 minute consultation with a Domain Method staff coach to get started. In that consultation, uh, one of our staff coaches will tell you how to get started with the program as soon as possible before the course even starts. So they will coach you in the process of getting started uh, now so that you know what to do in the meantime, even before you start the course. Also, if you sign up more than 90 days in advance, you get free access to three advanced courses that come after the online domain method course. You get an advanced course in speech development, which I teach. You have a course in establishing a good nutrition program for your child. It's a more advanced nutrition course after the one you take in the course. And you also get access to a course uh, by Melissa Doman, who's a pediatric sleep consultant, about how to help teach your child how to sleep independently and through the night. That is a $200 value on its own. You also get a free consultation and guidance to start the Doman Method Oxygenation Program once the child has gained physician approval after the course. That's a $199 value that parents usually buy to get that kind of specialized coaching in their child's respiration program. If you sign up more than three months in advance, we give that to you for free. So if you add up those three bonuses, it adds up to $559 in additional value. If you sign up 60 to 90 days in advance, you get $360 in additional value. You get the 30-minute consultation, so you still get the coaching call uh, as soon as you pay, and you also get free access to the three advanced courses after graduating. And if you sign up 30 to 60 days in advance, you get uh, access to the three advanced courses. So the earlier you sign up, the more bonuses you get. So my advice would be to reach out, go to our website, fill out the contact form, and get in touch with us as quickly as possible. Now, sometimes parents, after taking the online course, want to get their child evaluated. They know they want that kind of personalized help and recommendations from our team. Now, you can only, uh, if you wish, you can only take the course, uh, and, and that's absolutely fine. And many parents take the course and get started with the program at home. But some parents also want to know about evaluations. So we are currently offering evaluations in Philadelphia in the United States, which is our hub, in New Delhi, India, in Moscow, Russia, in Belgrade, Serbia, in Pisa, Italy, and 
Each year, we also make a trip to Latin America, and uh, it sometimes depends uh, the time of year, what part of Latin America we go to. But if you inquire, we can send you information about when our next trip is to one of these locations, and we can also help sign you up for an evaluation in these locations if you're interested. I'd like to show you a video now just about what an evaluation with Doman International might look like. For families who have attended the Doman Method course, having an initial visit with Doman International is an opportunity to learn from the world's leading experts in child development for children with special needs. When a family arrives on the first day, the child is evaluated by a Doman Method coach. This evaluation helps Doman International staff assess the child's current abilities and get to know the child. This evaluation, along with a medical examination and a developmental and program review, allows the staff to best help parents and child. The team at Doman International then meets to discuss the child's case and to design the very best program for the child. This meeting includes Doman International's directors and members of the cognitive, physical, nutrition, and respiratory development teams. Now that the child's Doman Method program is designed, the family meets with one member of each department to learn the best program for the child. This includes a cognitive program focused on improving comprehension, speech, and sensory abilities, a physical program to improve mobility and manual ability, a respiratory program to improve respiration and brain function, as well as a nutrition program to design the very best nutritional plan for that child. Each family is given the time they need to learn their new program in full, meeting the experts in each field. The visit ends with a meeting with a Doman International Director, who answers any final questions the family has. The family now has a fully designed treatment program for the next six months. Best of all, the family is given a Doman International staff coach who is there to answer any questions they have when they are at home. This guidance, coaching, and support can make all the difference. Contact Doman International to inquire about our evaluations worldwide. So, uh, of course, as I said, if you're interested in our online course, if you're interested in an evaluation, uh, please feel free to contact us through our website and one of our worldwide representatives will reach out to you as soon as possible. Sometimes parents want to learn about the Glenn Doman books. So if you were to get some books to get started, the first thing we would recommend is to get the book, What to Do About Your Brain Injured Child. Uh, you get to hear it from the man himself about his discoveries and findings uh, and the foundations of the Doman Method program. Next, the book, How to Teach Your Baby to Read. If you're interested in beginning the process of teaching your kid how to read, I would highly recommend this book. Uh, don't be dissuaded by it saying baby. It can be used for kids with special needs. And lastly, the book, Fit Baby, Smart Baby, Your Baby. Uh, is all about the Doman Method physical programs. And uh, for those of you who want to learn more about mobility development, this is a good place to begin. As, as I said, if you have any questions, just go to our website, click on the contact button and fill out the uh, questionnaire there. And one of our representatives will reach out to you as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that uh, you learned something helpful during this presentation. I try my very best to give some practical recommendations and hopefully you've seen at least one part of our program that you can see would be helpful uh, for your child's development. Uh, if I had to leave you with one last message, it would be to never, never, never give up. Uh, that motivation which drives you to find answers for your child drove you to sign up for this webinar today and uh, i know that having a kid with special needs can be a difficult and often frightening experience but it's your dedication to your child which is the best hope for your kid so never never give up keep looking for answers and i truly believe and hope that for your child the Doman method is one of those answers. But whether it is or it isn't, whether you decide to contact Doman International or not, uh, never, never, never give up uh, on your child. Uh, you are their best hope for achieving great things in life. Thank you on behalf of all the staff of Doman International. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I wish you all the very best. And I truly hope that in the future, I get to meet uh, 
every single one of you in the future at the online domain method course and at an evaluation at one of Domain International's worldwide uh, locations. Have a very, very good day. And thanks for joining me.